Welcome to the Triumph Rocket 3 GT, the world's largest production engine ever put in a motorcycle, and it is also the engine with the most torque production in the world as well. Bit of a beast. So the Rocket first came out in 2003. Staggering figures, it was the first production bike to ever break the 2 litre 2000cc barrier. In 2019, Triumph updated the, uh, the Rocket 3 and now they've got the uh, this GT model. I've never ridden a Rocket before. Little bit intimidated to see what it's like, but uh, let's take her for a bit of a ride. We've got a 2.5 litre cc triple engine in the bike. <laughs> got 165 brake horsepower, 221 newton meters of torque. Um, yeah, let's see if it's possible to build a motorcycle with an engine that big in it. And biggest engine, is it the ultimate cruiser? Let's find out. First of all, jumping straight on, she's a big girl. You really can feel it, big tank. And obviously down here, the, the engine, the 2.5 litre triple engine. But let's fire it up just take her for a ride and just get a feel for her basically just see what she's about enjoy the ride just trying to attempt to uh, relax into the bike and just see what it's all about see what it feels like it's going to be a fun review this oh so full disclosure i have i actually i've ridden it for about oh, 20 minutes so far so this isn't the very first ride but close enough to give you a bit of an idea of what um what i'm thinking coming to this bike is a little bit scared to be honest <laughs> like a little bit intimidated a 2.5 liter engine in a motorcycle yeah a little bit intimidated worried about the weight as well um it's over 300 kilograms wet so 315 kg wet weight so yeah sort of the pinnacle of um intimidating engines really <laughs> what's it like initially it is a no no word of a lie it's really easy it's really easy when you uh when you jump on okay it is big you re it's quite an imposing thing um, it's really like if I can describe it it's kind of a bit of a cliche but like hopping on a fighter jet it fit you can just sense the power in that engine it is just so big that engine down there but saying that hmm I'm really enjoying this bike I mean, I do a lot of the bikes I ride. Oh, it's a pheasant. You gotta be careful of those. Was that a pheasant? Pigeon. Come yeah, on. I've got it in uh, road mode at the moment. There's four modes rain, road, sport, and rider, which is a configurable mode. But. Oh! Obviously, there's so much torque and. I like obviously it goes without saying this thing is an absolute rocket ship um, <laughs> it will just take you up to 60 miles an hour 70 just like that but initial impressions is like I'm looking at this as to whether it's the ultimate cruiser and it's definitely in for a shout it's really smooth and just very easy to ride. You're going six, oh, well, it's 50. You're going at 50 miles an hour um, in fourth gear. Just creamy smooth um, rolling along. The suspension is nicely damped, actually. It's, it's on the sportier side. It's a lovely proposition for a cruiser, this rocket. Like, I started off in rain mode roll on here Ooh! Oh! Nelly ah oh, but it's because there's so much torque when you roll on like that it's not like manic horsepower it's a lot of horsepower 165 but it's not crazy horsepower it's just the torque which is a lovely experience to have loads and loads of torque to just pull through it is so smooth any revs it just oh, 
picks up. It's, it's like a spaceship, the power delivery. It, it's hard to explain. You've got to experience it yourself, but it's really nice. <laughs> it's not just a gimmick to have the world's largest production engine. It actually works. It's a really nice proposition. Okay guys, just to go over a couple of the specs for you. So up front the brakes, you've got two 320mm discs with four piston Brembo Stylema brakes. So some heavy anchors up front and um, yeah, the braking's actually, considering the weight of the bike, the braking is uh, more than adequate, we should say. So onto the rear brakes guys coming back here. Actually a nice example, it's a single sided swing arm uh, and it's shaft drive as well which in my books is a, is a big bonus for something this torquey. I think the, uh, the shaft drive is very useful. But what do you think about the wheels? I really like the wheels, really top quality in person here. Uh, alloy wheels, I mean they almost look like they should be on a, a top high-end car. Really quality, solid, solid, solid rims should we say. Onto that, onto those rear brakes, if you can see, you've got a um, single single disc, 300mm disc, but you actually have a uh, four piston Brembo caliper back here as well, so some, some heavy, heavy brakes on the rear as well. No worries with stopping power. Whilst we're here, before we uh, head out on the road again, might as well do the suspension. So up front you've got Showa upside down forks, 47mm with 120 millimeters of trouble. Should mention as well that the uh, the front suspension is adjustable. It's not electric suspension, but it is is fully adjustable on the on the forks here. Okay, so suspension on the rear. It's 107 millimeters worth of travel on the rear here, and it's fully adjustable on the rear also. Just before we jump back on and uh, hit the road with this beauty again, I actually can't wait to jump on it again. It's really really addictive um <laughs> machine it's it's really really special actually uh just go over the price so the price is twenty one thousand uh three hundred pounds for the gt model and then for the r model which i'll explain the differences now the r model is twenty thousand six hundred pounds so basically the difference the, the clues in the name this is the gt there are a few differences pretty basic differences so starting off you've got a little fly screen here on the front which looks good it does protect you from the wind a little bit but not massively like a touring screen etc but it's nice to have it there i like it another difference the foot pegs here so i'll actually hop down here hope you can see that on the gopro these are forward foot pegs on the gt so more cruiser laid back style but as you can see here these three fitting points you can easily change the forward foot pegs to go to go back to mid pegs there which is what it's like on the r more of a sportier um, compact traditional riding position so as you can see, they're very easily changeable. Um, George at Blade Motorcycles, thank you very much, Blade, for allowing me to ride another one of your majestic uh, demos here. Incredible bike, so thanks, Blade. But George was saying these are actually really easily changeable, and I, I can see what he means. You can see the fitting points. So you can either have them forward here, you can have them mid, or you can actually adjust them by several inches or so on the forward so if you are shorter in the legs oh excuse me and stand up then you can move those quite easily adjustable so that's really really nice another difference for the gt is the handlebars so the handlebars are, are more swept back the r they're more forward sort of tracker style flat handlebars the gt they're swept back so you're leaning back a bit more a bit more cruisy comfortable and last but not least difference for the gt so on the r you do get the pillion seat but for the gt you actually get this backrest for the pillion which yeah is very handy if you're going two up and you will have trust me no problems going two up on this bike it will be very comfortable i'd be surprised if you even noticed there was someone sitting on the back <laughs> honestly but a little feature about this i want to show you actually there's a little switch under here push it forward and it's an adjustable backrest really really quality alloy as well i think that's an awesome little touch actually on, on that note everything about this bike it's very expensive um <laughs> 
sorry Triumph, but it is quite a pricey bike. But everything is quality. You, you're, you're paying for a serious um, piece of kit, obviously the engine, but everything else as well, the touch, get, touch points, the alloys, everything's of real high quality, which is nice. So guys, let's jump back on the road and go for a ride. We'll go over sort of how she handles, what the brakes are like, etc. But first of all, I was a bit worried. One thing about this bike, I was a bit worried. I've always thought, well, it's such a big bike, so powerful. It's sort of only really for, for larger people, you know? <laughs> it's such a beast. And I thought maybe it's too hard to handle, man handling around, etc. It's got a 750 millimeter seat height. So it's a low seat height, got a nice, nice bend in my knees, flat footing really easily. Okay, it's over 300 kilograms. But honestly, like you don't wanna get it too far over, especially not with these chicken legs I've got here, but it's not, um, it's not a problem manhandling around. It's really not. I'm, I'm, I was worried because I was like, well, I can't, I personally couldn't ever buy a bike like this. I'd look silly. I'm too small, too slight. You know, it's for the bigger gentlemen or, or ladies. Um, but actually, not, not true at all. I could completely deal with this bike. Really easy to maneuver around. Let me show you one thing before we get going. Look at the quality of that. Nice key. I know it's not a massive point, but it does help every time you pull that out, brushed aluminium on the key. It's like you're driving a sort of top of the range Audi or Mercedes or something. Well, for the money, you're getting a good, good key. <laughs> hey -o. She's alive. So a quick note on the dash here. I actually generally prefer analog dashes on a, on a, if we're talking cruisers, the more traditional cruiser. So this has got the same dash as on the 1200 Scrambler. I think it actually suits this bike quite well because this is not really a traditional cruiser. I don't think it, it feels more modern than that feels a bit different so i think that dash the the digital dash actually works really well um i'm pleased about that so what are the brakes like on the big the big rocket well as we just went over there the brembo style lemurs oh woo! back on the road <laughs> Yee! so fun the brembo style lemurs yeah they are they're some powerful brakes they're not really sharp brakes, which is good, a good thing, in my opinion. But yeah, they are, um, there's loads of strength there. They're like car brakes. Uh, so for a cruiser, I think the Rocket has um, taken the, possibly the best set of brakes in the world on a, on a cruiser. Very impressive. What does she handle like, being, a, being such a big girl? Well, it's got, a very long wheelbase. When you come into sharp corners, like here, and then when it comes, oh perfect, it comes back to on itself to the right, you can flick it, it flicks nicely and it changes direction nicely, but it's not the fastest bike to change direction. But for a cruiser, it's very good. You can get some nice counter steering going on through the handlebars. <laughs> Sorry, that is addictive, that torque, so nice. Oh. Every time, that is just addictive, that torque. It's just like riding a wave, so nice. So, riding position, guys. It's very comfortable. Don't get me wrong, it is very comfortable. Nice swept back handlebars, nicely positioned foot pegs, and it is a cruiser, cruiser riding position. But if you're looking for maximum comfort, then you're probably going to be more comfortable on a more traditional style cruiser. Uh, this is much more geared towards performance in its riding position as well. You know, I'd probably want the bars back a bit further, perhaps a bit higher. But yeah, it's, it's a mega comfortable bike. So as she is a cruiser, Technically, is she the ultimate cruiser? Just take her on the motorway. See what she's like on the motorway on longer journeys. But another thing I like about this bike is standard, you get the uh, bar end wing mirrors. I just, they're the best, aren't they? Bar end wing mirrors, they, they give you the best view 
Um, they look the best, nice and clean, nice style. I, I really like the uh, bar end wing mirrors. One thing to note actually is when I hopped on the bike, it was a low on fuel. So I did put sort of eight, nine pounds in roughly. It's an 18 litre tank, so no shortage of fuel there, but the fuel light, I don't know if you've noticed, has been on the whole time. Maybe it's just got a high threshold as to when the, uh... God, those rear brakes are strong. I just smashed down on those rear brakes. Those are the, that's nice, reassuring. Yeah, whether it's a high threshold on that fuel light, I'm not sure, but just, just something to note there. Anyway, let's jump on the motorway, come dual carriageway, and, and see what she's like as a, what cruisers are sometimes used for. All right, guys, just quickly, quick one before we jump on the motorway. Let's go over some of the electronics, actually, because bearing in mind traditional cruisers, a lot of them don't come with as much tech as the, uh, the rocket here, so you've got Heated grips are standard, three-way, three-way adjustable heated grips. Cruise control is standard, obviously you have your four riding modes. This bike comes with cornering ABS and traction control. Yeah, just to note on that, there's a lot of tech on this bike that other, some other manufacturers of cruisers may not have, so that, that's a bonus to the rocket. But here we go, let's jump on the uh, dual carriageway. So you can see around these it's just so planted this bike it's, it's fantastic it's great fun <laughs> and me being quite sort of slight build um it feels big but I, I i like this bike power power between your legs right what's it like on dual carriageway so fourth gear 60 miles an hour roll on gonna stop there <laughs> it just goes up so quickly it picks up pace and it does it in a very efficient way it's not manic it's not like it's lighting the rear end up and gonna throw you in a bush it's really smooth pickup and actually quite confidence inspiring that is one thing that, that I'm really liking about this bike it's not scary it's it's under control all of that torque which is really nice but yeah, on the dual carriageway, so there's a fair bit of wind coming off of that screen. It's clean air, definitely clean, and not getting any buffeting, but for a longer ride, that is, that is sort of heavy wind, windage, if you like. Another point to note, actually, the suspension, even though these are quite smooth roads, you do get the odd bump, and if you were on a, I keep on saying Harley, they're the most obvious cruisers, but a Harley, the, the BMW, whatever, a big Indian, big cruiser, You've got softer suspension that is, uh, is more comfortable if you're looking for just a laid back, traditional pop, 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 cruisy, comfortable ride. This, this rocket is more planted, stiffly, stiffly sprung. But at these high speeds, she is comfortable and there's just oodles of power to, to play with. Well, stuck behind a, uh, a house. <laughs> so overall, the Triumph Rocket 3, like I say, I was coming in, Jesus, fairly intimidated by this bike. I'm glad to say it's not that intimidating. Um, Triumph have done such a good job to note with the, the engine on this. It, it's being such a huge engine, 2.5 litres, the, the inertia of the engine it's very well refined and usable so yeah I'm, I'm actually an absolute lover of this bike completely fallen 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 head over heels for it yeah it's a really special thing expensive very expensive machine but if you can afford one well worth taking a look at because it's a it's a special special thing in general actually <laughs> to uh, to ride on the road note to self one thing if this was like Honda's DCT if it was an automatic and you know smooth and no problems going up through the gears god can you imagine without having to change gear yourself or if it had a silky smooth quick shifter you would just be poof like light speed through that torque and it would be creamy creamy smooth as well one to note and that actually made me think electric can you imagine an electric rocket? The torque and the smoothness, it's an addictive thing. 
Anyway, many thanks for watching, guys. Many thanks to Blade Motorcycles again for the ride. Give them a shout if you're interested in the bike or you want to take this very model for a ride. Is it the ultimate cruiser? I'm not going to say it is, just because it's, it's different to your traditional cruiser. It just depends on what you're after. If you want an old school traditional cruiser, this is probably not it. But if you want something different and very special, then definitely give this a ride. Yeah, great bike. Many thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It massively helps the channel. Um, if you like the video and see you in the next video, have a great day. And let's hope the, uh, the sun keeps shining. Till next time. Ciao, Bella.